Hello viewers, I am Kausalya. Today we are going to discuss about procedure for constructing root locus. First let me explain what is a root locus. So root locus is nothing but here as the name indicates we are going to adjust the location of the roots of the characteristic equation or in other words location of the poles. Right. So location of the poles of a closer loop transfer function. So what is the need for adjustment in order to make the system to give the desired output or predicted output. Right. So now we proceed with step one. So step one is location of poles and zeros. Right. From the transfer function, we have to calculate the values of poles and zeros and we have to mark it. So this is our S plane. Right. And here. This is our real axis. X axis stands for real axis. This is for plus real axis and here minus. And similarly, imaginary axis positive and imaginary axis negative. So after calculating the values of poles and zeros, here we are marking the respective points. Poles are denoted as this cross and zeros are denoted by a small circle. Right. So as we already know from the characteristic equation the denominator terms are known as poles and the numerator terms are known as zeros right and here here n is number of poles and m is number of zeros and m root locus branches ends at finite zeros that is that is a rule right the root, a root locus will always starts at pole and it will end at zero right and n minus m root locus branches will end at zeros at infinity that is we cannot mark those zeros perfectly on a sheet right but it is assumed that that root locus branch will meet zeros at infinity right so step one is over here here in step one we are done nothing just we have calculated the poles and zeros after calculating poles and zeros here we are using some different notations n stands for number of poles and m stands for finite zeros finite zeros are nothing but those zeros which can be marked on a sheet right so when i when i explain in procedure you may think it seems to be bigger and it seems to be a little bit tough but once we started solving the problem it will be very very easy right so just in order to know that typical a new different terms just I am starting with the procedure right now the step 2 is existence of root locus on the real axis so we have to check whether the root locus is on the real axis or not so for this purpose we have to consider it as point on the real axis right if the total number of poles and zeros on the real axis to the right of this test point is odd number then the test point lies on the root locus or else it is not right so what is the thing is we have to take a test point and to the test point to the right hand side of the test point you should have odd number of poles and zeros right so i will explain with this part right so again consider the diagram now consider a test point here right so to the right hand side of test point how many poles we are having we are having only one pole so what is the thing is from origin to this test point there is a existence of root locus right suppose if you consider a test point over here so to the right hand side of test point how many poles and zeros are there to this point okay to the right hand side of this point i am having two poles then there is no root locus from origin to this test point again if you have a test point over here to the right hand side of test point how many poles and zeros you see one two three it is an odd number right so there is a existence of root locus from origin to this test point right so this is our step number two step three is angle of asymptotes and centroid so this is a formula in this formula n denotes number of poles and m denotes number of zeros and q stands for we have to calculate the values of q up to n minus m right and centroid is nothing but it is the meeting point of asymptotes with the real axis and the formula is sum of poles minus sum of zeros divided by n minus m and step 4 is break away and break in point so we should know where is the chance of having a breakaway and break in point? 
So, if root locus exists between two poles, then there is a breakaway point, right? So, if we are having two poles like this and if root locus exists between these two poles, then there is a chance of having a breakaway. Similarly, if a root locus exists between two zeros, right? Let this be the two zeros. So, if the root locus exists between two zeros, then there is a chance of having break in point, right? Again, if a root locus exists between a pole and a zero, let this is our zero and let this is our pole. If a root locus exists between these two, right? Then there may be or may not be breakaway or break in point. That is breakaway or break in point may exist or else not, right? So how to find this breakaway and break in point? Again from the characteristic equation. So, let this be our characteristic equation. From this characteristic equation, we are deriving an another equation in terms of k. Right. So, from this case, we have to differentiate it and we have to equate it to 0. And the respective values will give you the breakaway or break in point. Right. Step 5 is angle of departure and angle of arrival. Right. So, this condition occurs only if we have complex conjugate poles, right? So, here in this diagram, you see we are having complex conjugate poles. What is mean by complex conjugate? For example, if you are having 2 plus or minus 3j, right? 2 plus or minus 3j is a complex conjugate pole, right? So, here this A and A star dance for, stands for complex conjugate. So, here A. 2 plus 3j and here for a star it is 2 minus 3j right for example we are taking that number that's it so here we are having a pair of complex conjugate poles right and rest of them we are having you see we are we are having two zeros and two poles here right yes now we are going to calculate angle of departure and angle of arrival so we are considering this point A and we are going to calculate the angles from different poles and zeros. So, here we are naming it as theta 1, theta 2, this one theta 3, theta 4 and theta 5. And here the distance between this uh, real axis and this complex conjugate pole is taken as A here. Right, along y axis it is A. And from different poles and zeros you see the distance is marked like this. C, B, E and D. Right. Now, we are going to calculate theta 1. So, theta 1 is calculated as 180 minus tan inverse of A by B. So, here this is my A and B is the distance between this point and our pole this one. Our cal we are calculating an angle at theta 1, right? That respective pole. The distance between the respective pole and this complex conjugate pole is P. Right. So, here it is written as tan inverse of A by B. And again for theta 2. So, theta 2 again tan inverse of A by here the distance is it is C right. So, here tan inverse of A by C. And for theta 3 you see it is exactly 90 degrees right. So, theta 3 is 90 degree. And again for theta 4 it is again tan inverse of A by the distance is D. So, tan inverse of A by D. Again for theta 5, it is tan inverse of A by E. So, here tan inverse of A by E. Right. So, angle of departure at pole A. This is given by the formula 180 minus theta 1, theta 3, theta 5 plus theta 2 plus theta 4. Right. And again angle of departure at pole that is A star. A star is nothing but here. Right. So, for A star it is nothing but it is the negative of the angle of departure at pole A. For example, let the angle of departure at pole A be some 27 degrees. Right. So, angle of departure at pole A star will be minus 27 degrees. That's it. Now, we are going to calculate angle of arrival. So, angle of arrival occurs when we have a pair of complex conjugate zeros. Right. So, here we had marked the respective things the same like the previous case again here we are having a pair of poles okay here one is marked as a and another one is marked as a star right and here we are having different values of theta theta 1 theta 2 
theta 3, theta 4 and theta 5. So here the theta 1 it is given as again 180 degree minus tan inverse of and the distance is here A and the distance from this 0, 0 to this point is C. So tan inverse of A by C. Again for theta 2 the same thing 180 degree minus tan inverse of this is A, this length is A and this distance is B. So A by B and for theta 3 it is 90 degrees and for theta 4 theta 4 it is tan inverse of A by D and theta 5 it is tan inverse of again A by E here right. So angle of arrival at 0 A it is given by again the same thing 180 minus theta 1 plus theta 3 plus theta 2 plus theta 4 plus theta 5. Again angle of arrival at 0 A star is given by the same thing minus angle of arrival at 0 A the same case. If here if you are having some 13 degrees and here it is minus 13 degrees that is it. Then the step 6 is point of intersection of root locus with the imaginary axis. So here this is calculated by using three methods and first one is Routh Hurwitz array and second one is trial and error approach and the third one is substituting the values and it is a little bit bigger right. So Routh Hurwitz array we all know right we had seen already. And trial and error approach also it is just like a synthetic division. And now here substituting here s equal to j omega that is in the characteristic equation substitute s as j omega. Okay then separate the real and imaginary terms right. So now equate the real part to 0 and imaginary part to 0 we will be having two different equations. Solve those two equations and find the values of omega and k. Right. Here omega value gives the point where the root locus crosses the imaginary axis. Right. So omega gives the value where root locus crosses imaginary axis and k gives the value of k gain k at this crossing point. That is k denotes the gain value. That is it. Okay. At the crossing point. So again from the value of k we can find the range of k for the stability that is limiting value is nothing but for what range of k the system will remain stable right. That is it totally we are having 6 steps to solve the root locus. Hope you people understand the concept if you have any doubt let me know in the comment section thank you.